The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 913 Some Better Than Others So, what interests you about the gravity machine? And Emini asked as the group walked through the halls of the space department, Sea Star having departed to go do professor things. You said your friend missed the air? Your airship, I presume. But I winced a little. Ah, uh, yeah, that. Shine Spark shook her head. My cutie mark formerly allowed me to fly, but it needed my horn, and that no longer functions. Valet stared at her. I thought we were keeping that mostly under wraps. Ah, uh, Shine Spark shrugged. Well, in the Empire, and only to prevent news of who Brain was from reaching Einrich, and it's been long enough that it wouldn't matter anymore anyway. I'm sorry, fly? Anemone interrupted. Could you clarify that a little? Not really, Shinesbuck said. I could surround myself with magic and fly, move around through the air. There isn't an obtuse meaning to it. Anemone stared for a moment. I've never heard of a cutie mark that can do that before, she mused, shaking her head. And yours reacted unusually earlier. Oh, she glanced at Valet. Cutie marks must work differently up north than they do down here. Valet flicked her tail. Or we wound up traveling with each other because we all had stuff in common. They do work differently, Starlet interrupted. Most ponies never get one. It's not like here, where it happens to everyone. Speaking of Sparky's mark being unusual, Valet cut a nodding, doesn't it have this thing where it generates way more of what we call harmony up north than most ponies? What do you call the magical stuff generated by ponies' cutie marks? Anemone blinked at them. What? You know, Valet patted her butt, showing off her mark. The stuff that, like, does useful stuff? Bananas, I don't know how it works. Shinespark shook her head. It isn't relevant. We won't be doing anything with it anytime soon, and if you want me to move on, you aren't going to change that. Anemone paused. Does that mean you'd rather I not show you the gravity machine? The lady gave Shinespark a look that dared her to go see it. Shinespark averted her eyes. Starlight and Yala awkwardly stood nearby. Oh, hello, a vaguely familiar voice called from down the hall. It's you! Everyone looked. Starlight blinked, slowly recognizing one of the student nurses from the hospital. Hi, she greeted, realizing the others weren't going to be as fast. What are you doing here? The nurse's ears flopped. Moving your catatonic friend, we were told to give her an ice water bath, and this facility has a temperature stress testing chamber. Do you know anything about that? Because it seems like a bad idea to me... Ah, uh, Valet frowned. You mean meltdown? Isn't her thing usually extremely high temperatures? She's called meltdown for a reason. The nurse shrugged. Your friends told us to do it. Felicity and Amber? Anemone was staring. Why are you putting a catatonic mare in the temperature test room? Niala cleared her throat. Well, you could always go see her if you're not enthusiastic about the gravity machine. She looked considerably more comfortable now that they were out of the underground and her voice was stronger too. None of you have paid an extreme amount of attention to her over the last month. Speaking for myself, maybe she's fine with that, but she also might be lonely too. Shinesbuck frowned. She doesn't usually have a lot to say. Starlight was already walking off in the direction the nurse had come from. This is a temperature stress testing room? Valet stared around at a wide open space. I sort of figured it would be a sealed thingamajig, but this looks like an industrial swimming pool. Vats of water separated by metal catwalks were recessed into the ground with a system of beams and cranes overhead. Most of the vats were filled, and one near the center was steaming heavily. I wonder if that's hers, Shinespark muttered. Anemone gave the vat a perplexed look. But you said an ice bath, and that's steaming. Valet shrugged. Look, I've seen this mare drop fireballs and shoot gigantic pillars of flame. My money's not on your ice bath here. Anemone blinked. 
You have a lot of very curious friends. That's how it goes, Shinesbuck sighed. Niala was already halfway along the catwalks, and Starlight followed along. The steam from the steaming vat was slowly starting to clear, aided partly by gigantic fume hoods that covered the ceiling, and a trio of nurses and scientists were staring at the vat, boggled as Meltdown treaded water in the middle. Kolda, Meltdown called. Can you increase the flow? An engineer stallion Starlight hadn't met stared at her and Niala. Do you have any idea what this even is? he asked, a clipboard hanging slack on a lanyard about his neck. It's you. Meltdown's eyes briefly met Starlight's. I see I have visitors already. They can work the controls. Thank you for your efforts. You are dismissed. The trio all blinked. Yikes, the other scientist said. No disrespect, but no need to be bossy. We're risking turning you to a popsicle to do you a favor. My apologies, Meltdown closed her eyes. I've had a very unpleasant span of time. The ponies awkwardly stepped back, nodding in understanding, but not leaving fully. Hey, you're awake, fully greeted, arriving and seating herself by the edge of the pool. Long time no, um, whatever we used to do together. Sorry, most of what I remember you for is that pirate ship where you dueled puddles. Meltdown slowly blinked. Weren't you dead? Valet shrugged. I got better. I don't really remember it, but I've heard it wasn't the greatest. I can relate. The remaining nurse looked sympathetic and both science students disturbed. Did you just casually say you got better from being dead? One asked. Yep. Valet rolled her shoulders, glancing back at them. Listen, I know the adventuring lifestyle is super glamorous here, but just take it from me. Don't be too jealous. The scientists looked at each other and blinked. I think it's hard to call what we spent the last month doing living, Shinesbuck cut in. You laid in bed all day. I sat in the hold all night. It's a month we aren't going to get back. Only a month? Meldon folded her ears. It felt like forever. How is Gazelle? Starlight and Valet both winced. Not too stable. Figures. Meltdown looked vaguely cross. Not to intrude, Niala said, but it could stand to be a little less tense in here. Is there anything we can do for you? Meltdown's eyes flicked to the students. There are too many ponies here for my comfort. All right, fine, I can take a hint. Uh, one of the students grumbled and wandered off. Hope you don't suddenly realize it's freezing in there or anything. You find a one adventurer who actually needs your talents and they aren't impressed at all. The others hesitantly followed and Meltdown sat a little easier in her tank. Valet frowned at her. You know, I'd ask if you're all right, but I'm pretty sure you wouldn't appreciate me not guessing for myself. I am not all right, Meltdown replied curtly, and you should be aware that I don't like being around ponies when I'm vulnerable. Thank you for treating me as well as you did. I didn't have a good time. Would you prefer to be left alone now, then? Uh, Niala hesitated. We just heard you were here, and I just suggested you might enjoy company. Thank you for the thought, Meltdown closed her eyes. If you would like to help, what I would enjoy most is a way to regain my autonomy. I require my brand to do most of the things one would associate with being alive, and the heat is a byproduct. I don't expect you to be able to create a coolant suit matching the entire Griffin Empire's technological prowess, or even to know the first thing about them, but the efforts I would appreciate. Scheinspark stared at her and thought. So, that's a yes on being left alone? Uh, Valet momentarily frowned. Well, all right then, back to plan A, I guess. Come on, let's go check out that gravity machine. Well, it's nice seeing you talking again, Niala waved, turning to leave as well. Starlight wanted to be the last one to leave, certain there was more that Meltdown had left unsaid, something she was saving for the very end. 
But Scheinspark proved more determined than her, and so she followed on Valet and Niala's heels, looking over her shoulder as she left. Scheinspark had caught up by the time they returned to the hallway. Who was that? Anemone asked, glancing back at the closed doors. I'm guessing her story wasn't a happy one. None of ours were, Scheinspark grunted. She was high up in the Griffin Empire, helped us fight a monster that was about to destroy the place. We all lost, and we took her with us when we evacuated. She was a teenager. Tell me she wasn't. Anemone gave her a look. Scheinspark shrugged. That didn't stop me from leading half of Iron Ridge. The North doesn't work the way things do here, apparently. Hello, gravity machine? Valet waved a wing to distract them. Come on, trust me, this is going to be awesome. Why? Scheinspark stared at her. Aside from positivity for the sake of positivity, what do you know about it? Because I have other things on my mind. That's the point, Valet bumped her flank with her own, to get your mind off those. Scheinspark frowned. Come on, you used to love this, right? Valet shoved her along down the hallway. At least you have a cutie mark in it, so I hope you did. If I were you, I'd be kicking myself sideways over spending the last bajillion years coming up with excuse after excuse to limit my use of it. I know I'd be ticked if I had a cutie mark that gave me a horn and that I never used it and lost it. You know what I'd do if I had a horn? Lay on a couch and not even need to get up to fetch more fruit from across the room when I got hungry. I don't have a horn either. Shunspark's look darkened. Please don't rub it in. Valet backed off inside. Okay, if I'm not helping, I get it. I really just want to see you smile. Does this work? Uh, Scheinspark tried something that, if seen for a split second for a telescope, could be interpreted as a genuine smile. Thanks for trying. Valet smiled back, hers much less burdened. So what am I doing? Anemone interrupted. For ponies who talk about fighting monsters and making life and death decisions, you all are some of the most indecisive I've ever seen. Starlight stepped right through the trio of arguing ponies, forcing their attention to her. It turns out, when you have a lot of important decisions to make, every decision feels important, she said. And so you spend too long on the ones you can afford to because you're afraid of the consequences. Well, I'm not afraid of losing a few hours by going to see a gravity machine and having it be boring, so I'm going even if no one else is. That's... the spirit? Anemone looked slightly worried, but nodded, leading her on. Meanwhile, halfway across the island... Well, darling, I think we've learned a very important lesson from all this, Felicity said, standing in a brightly lit street somewhere in College Town and brushing down her coat. Amber grinned and winced at the same time. Don't say the pickled cucumbers are delicious when they're actually awful to avoid offending the one whose idea it was to get them because there's a good chance she's doing the same for you? Yeah, Felicity rubbed her tongue with a wing. I was going to say, listen to the helpful students who tell us a place is no good and don't go anyway just because we think we recognize the cuisine despite being from a world away. Also, pickled cucumbers are just called pickles. Those were zucchini, which is why they were bad. But yes, that works too. Amber burst out laughing. Well, this day's really gone awful so far. <laughs> what do you want to bet anyone else is having worse luck than we are? I'll raise you a pickled zucchini. She coughed furtively. Which is what real pickles are called, by the way. Cough, cough. Cough, cough, cough. Categorically false. Have you ever even seen a cucumber? Or a real pickle? I fear for the state of Riverfall cuisine. But take heart, darling. It's barely noon. Felicity patted her back encouragingly. We've still plenty of time to turn things around. Now, I didn't eat a particularly large meal thanks to those terrible zucchini. So do you think we ought to seek out better fare while we're still here? I do say not to swim on a full stomach, so we could always drive at bathhouse. 
Amber's eyes drifted to the east. It's a bathhouse. What could go wrong? Spoken like a true temptress of fate, Felicity grumbled, though she had a little smile as well. For all I know, today will be the day we learn equestrian gender signs, the opposite of what they are up north, and wind up crashing the stallion's room. That would be simply dreadful. Ick, that would be the worst. Hee <laughs> hee. Oh, whatever. Let's try our luck. For the record, this time it's my idea, so it's on you if you pretend everything's fabulous just to soothe my feelings and get us all in trouble as a result. I can still taste it. Says so someone who thinks pickles means pickled cucumbers. I'm telling you, if they had actually been zucchini, they were zucchini. That's why they tasted so foul. <laughs> Hey, imagine if someone left an entire crate of cucumbers laying around in the bathhouse for some reason. Or imagine if we misread the signs and thought something was a bathhouse when it was actually a cucumber warehouse. That would ruin our day for sure. Darling, stop digging yourself deeper. The victor in this spot is never going to let the other live this down. End of chapter 913